G'day folks, uh, Jim here from Orchard Forex. It's uh, Wednesday the 8th of July. Um, I thought I'd put out a quick uh, video and take a look at the charts. There's uh, some risk uh, aversion. Now it does seem to be creeping in as uh, as seen in the stock markets on Tuesday, which ended uh, lower after some uh, comments from the Fed, uh, warning of headwinds to uh, economic growth because of the pandemic, uh, which does seem to be increasingly out of control, particularly in the US. Uh, if it wasn't for the um, massive uh, central bank injection of funds that we've seen uh, globally stocks would already be much lower but in line with the stimulus that uh, we've uh, seen a, a decent rally this week uh, although that may now be, be coming to an end uh, increasing uh, safe haven demand and uh, showing some uh, interesting formation on the charts so we'll go and have a look and uh, we'll start with the stock markets um, and here we have a uh, S&P daily chart as you can see we, we bounced off uh, this FIBO support down here um, that was around 29.80. Got back above the 200-day moving average, and we haven't really looked back. But we did. We have closer percent to, uh, lower today after making a new uh, new high. And uh, the, the, although the, the the daily charts aren't really showing a great deal of momentum, I, I do suspect uh, the the RSIs seem to be running out of steam, uh, and the stochastics, I guess, too as well. But uh, I think we it's not unreasonable to suspect that. Uh, Risk uh, avoidance will uh, will set in given uh, what's going on in the world at the moment. So um, really, what I'm looking for now is, is basically a return to this uh, trend, uh, rising trend support. That's probably about a hundred points away. Uh, if we look here, it's probably 30, uh, 30 65 or so. Um, and below that, we've got uh, the uh, two hundred day moving average at thirty and a quarter, and then down here the uh, FIBO support at twenty nine eighty, which we got to. Uh, when was that? On the 29th, end of, end of June. I, personally, I think we're probably uh, stuck in a range for a while. These highs here, I think, will probably cap it. That's around 3165, 3165 and 3180. Um, and I, I wouldn't be surprised to see us head back down to, towards uh, and below 3100 and maybe test the uh, uh, 200 day moving average eventually. Uh, the four hour charts are pointing a little bit lower. So it doesn't seem unreasonable for us to, to have a little bit of downside momentum. Um, in the longer term, the, the weeklies are, are still looking pretty positive, uh, although, as I say, the RSIs are, are running out of some steam here. But the, uh, the MACDs do, do still seem uh, to show uh, some upside uh, potential. So um, I, I wouldn't be uh, getting too down market on, on this. I, I do think we're going to see some support here uh, and probably that's not a bad buying uh buying area. So I'd, I'd really want to again trade the range as I said uh, a week or so ago. This was 31.80 down to 29.80. It's 200 points. Just uh, just trade that. Uh, the interesting thing at the moment though is uh, is the gold market which uh, today or on Tuesday made a new high that we haven't been to since uh, 2012. Um, now I do like gold uh, but do note that there is some bearish divergence here. We've got higher highs and lower highs here. Uh, so while I do like it, it's going to be a choppy ride, I think, to the top side. And we, we really need to break above this 1800 uh, to um, induce us with some fresh buying uh, into the market, I think. And then uh, then I think once we've got above 1800, made a daily close there, then I think we can probably start to accelerate. Uh, the weekly charts, somewhat overbought. And once again, the RSIs are running out of a bit of steam. So, but uh, the the MACD is still at positive. The uh, the weekly uh, stochastics possibly becoming a bit overbought, but in the long term, the trend is higher, and I I think we are going to get dips like this. Hopefully, not like this. That was a, a, a you know that's a two hundred dollar uh, drop, but we are going to see these sort of fifty dollar drops, uh, and that that's where I think we need to be buying into. If we go out to the monthly charts, as you can see, we've just uh, reached these highs here. And we need to take those out. And if we do, uh, then there's an awful, an awful lot to uh, stop us going all the way back up here to sort of 1900 plus. So that's uh, that's worth uh, keeping an eye on. Uh, in the short term, the four hourly charts do look positive. Uh, but once again, a little bit of bearish divergence. So rather than buy it here, I, I'd be looking for a dip back to sort of 1775, 1780 and uh, trying to get in on that one. I think probably now stop losses, uh, you should probably keep a stop loss. 
somewhere down below here, I think, possibly below here, somewhere in the 45-55 region, probably below 1750 is, uh, is uh, safe. But if it does go through there, then I think we might see a deeper pullback. Um, OK, going forward, there's a couple of interesting things in the currency markets. OK, so the return of some safe haven demand has uh, seen a, a push back into the US dollar. Um, and that's brought the euro off its highs, although the, the economic growth outlook uh, released by the European Commission last night did, wasn't, wasn't very pretty for the uh, EU economy for the balance of this year and into next year. So right now we're, we're sitting at this for 112 and three quarters. There's going to be good support uh, below here, though, so that's a 112, uh, 40, 50 level. Uh, and if we break that, we can head back down here probably to 112.20 but if we do go through there then i think we can we can see some acceleration uh to the downside where 38 uh, percent uh fibo level is at 111.70 from this move up here now the uh short term the four hourly indicators aren't showing an awful lot so maybe we just drift around here and try and sit above this support i do think we're probably likely to test it 112 and a half um, but whether we go through it or not, uh, I don't know. As, as I say, there's not much momentum behind this move. Um, the, the dailies do look a little bit uh, heavy, but uh, they, they've really corrected their overbought, uh, uh, the original overbought status with this consolidation we've seen for the last couple of weeks. Uh, I, I suspect we're probably going to break out of that fairly soon. I do like the downside, um, but I think uh, it's probably going to be a slow move. And you know, if we got down to sort of this one eleven. 1171 11 and a half area you'd probably look to to, to buy it to buy shorts back uh, the same applies a little bit to the Aussie uh, I should say with the euro uh, if we do go back we go to the four hour chart if we do go back above this level here 113 and a half uh, I don't think you want to be short because uh, above there would allow us back to this or 114 30 area which uh, 2030 area which we saw uh, mid June but uh, in the meantime, I prefer to be short than long. Uh, kind of the same applies to the Aussie. We're sitting on a couple of good levels of support here. Uh, we're just below, back below 69 and a half. Uh, and maybe we just drift around here today. But uh, with the increasing uh, concerns going on in Victoria, uh, with the lockdown, that uh, it looks as though we're going to sort of six weeks of uh, trouble down there. And uh, that, that's going to slow the economy down. So I, I would think that the Aussies going to come under some uh, headwinds on the top side and we, we might we, we we might see a break of this support between sort of 60 69 figure and 69 30 uh, if we do break that back down below there then i think we can possibly head back towards 68 uh, and, and eventually even to this sort of 60 uh, yeah 6, 67 sort of, yeah 67 and three quarters so that's a long way off at the moment um, but uh, I, I prefer to be sure once again though the momentum indicators aren't showing us an awful lot the dailies, uh, if anything, pointing very slightly lower. But um, I, I wouldn't get too excited, but I think the uh, the drift uh, lower can continue. Uh, what else have we got? I've been watching Sterling Aussie. Of course, it's had a, a long downtrend uh, for the last uh, well, two or three months. And I'm just wondering if uh, we might have seen a bit, we might be putting in a bit of a base here. Uh, there's no real reason to want to be long sterling I don't think uh, fundamentally if the Brexit talks uh, don't pick up um, sterling is going to come under a bit of pressure but the cross does look as though uh, it, uh, it it wants to uh, test a little bit higher ground perhaps so um, I, I've started buying a bit down here it looks like we're going to it, 181 and a half we're going to see some uh, resistance but uh, uh, here we are with the four hour chart. So that's about 181.5 area. But as you can see, there's no real FIBO resistance until sort of 185 or so. Um, so I think there is potential for the upside. Uh, the four hourly charts are not doing an awful lot. They might be pointing a little bit higher. But the dailies are also seem to be picking up a bit of momentum to the top side. So it's just worth watching. Having said that, the weeklies uh, still uh, are pointing lower. So. Uh, um, you, it's while while this might be a good trade for the next two or three days, uh, it's something to look out for. But uh, the weeklies still look a bit heavy. Having said that, we with the two hundred week moving average is down here, it was one one seventy eight, and that's going to provide uh, ongoing support. Um, that's probably about it for today. I haven't uh, really got many other bright ideas, um, but uh, that Sterling Aussie is is worth watching. 
So uh, we've got a pretty empty calendar today. So here is the uh, calendar. As you can see, we haven't got an awful lot. There's a bit of Japanese data, a couple of ECB speeches. Uh, the EC uh, has already released uh, its growth forecasts uh, for 2020, 20, 2021. They weren't very special for this year, but uh, forecast a bounce back next year. Uh, and apart from that, there's really nothing else for Wednesday. Uh, as we move forward, tomorrow uh, we get Chinese inflation data, uh, some Australian home lending uh, data, and the, the weekly jobless claims. But then on, and then on Friday, there's not an awful lot either. So it might be a, a quite drift into the weekend this week. Uh, as you can see, there's not an awful lot. The US PPI out on Friday, and that's about it. So um, until then, um, have a good day's training today, and uh, I'll uh, do another video next week. Cheers.